let's see if we can learn a little bit about power and error together. I'm going to draw them on distributions so that we can visualize these a little bit better. What I'd like to do is draw the distribution so you can visualize um, where power and error are as I'm teaching them to you. So the first thing I want to do is draw a nice normal distribution. Let's say we're going to be looking at intelligence and that's normally distributed. So this is my attempt at drawing a nice normal distribution. All right, I'm going to draw a better one because I had a little, little blip at the tail there. There's my attempt at drawing a nice normal <laughs> distribution. So if we have this distribution, this is intelligence, and we see that there's um, an average intelligence here in the middle, and then there's people on the upper end and people on the lower end. Let's say I'm going to do some kind of intervention. Maybe I'm going to give people vitamin dam, and I want to see what happens to their intelligence. Before I even look at the average intelligence of those who got vitamin DAM, I first want to establish what my rejection regions are in this distribution. Right, so this is review. I'm just taking a step back on what you already know. So if I want to draw um, a rejection region, let's make it two-tailed because I don't know what's really going to happen to people who take vitamin DAM. So I'm going to draw my upper tail part of the distribution, and I like to make my rejection regions red. So let me um, fill this in with red. So see how that's the upper part of the distribution. Now let's draw the lower part of this distribution. So what I have here are my two rejection regions. Let's just say that <laughs> this is symmetrical and perfectly drawn. So I have my normal distribution. These are average people and I have my rejection region on the left and then I have my rejection region on the right. So these are our rejection regions. Now let's say that there is no difference in those who consume vitamin DAM and those who don't. That means that everyone is part of this yellow distribution. There is no other distribution that these uh, vitamin DAM consumers would be a part of. Everybody is part of this normal yellow distribution. Well, we had just defined that the upper 2.5% would be our rejection region and the lower 2.5% would be our rejection region. So if everyone is part of this normal distribution and there are no differences in those who consume vitamin DAM and those who don't, do you see how 5% of the time I'm going to be making an error? This red zone here is considered our type one error. So our type one error is represented here in red and that's the percent of the time that we're going to erroneously say, hey, there's a difference between those who consume vitamin D, or sorry, vitamin DAM and those who don't. That would be a mistake because everybody is part of the yellow distribution and we have concluded because we set this arbitrary line of two and a half percent up here and two and a half percent down there that if we end up calculating a mean up here even though they're part of a normal distribution we will have concluded they're different so that means that if we have set alpha to be five percent we will have a five percent likelihood of making a type one error errors are bad well, let's say that there actually is a difference in those who consume vitamin D. I'm going to get rid of this rejection region mark here because I want to start drawing things over here and I don't want it to be in the way. So don't be confused if it goes away. It's still a rejection region. So now let's draw a new distribution. And this is going to be the distribution of those who consume vitamin DAM. And let's say that it actually does make you smarter. And the reason I'm saying vitamin DAM is because there's no such thing. I don't want you going out and consuming something thinking it's going to make you smarter. So I'm going to draw a nice different distribution. I don't want it to be black because it's hard for me to see some of the overlap. So let's make it a pretty blue. So with this blue distribution, let's say these are the vitamin DAM consumers. Now, if I don't know anything about this blue distribution, which in actuality, I don't. I don't know if it exists. All I have is the mean from the vitamin DAM sample that I took. Now that mean could have come from anywhere in this blue distribution. But if you're thinking like a statistician and you only have this blue distribution, if you've gathered a mean, where do you think that mean likely came from? Do you think if I gathered a mean of 30 people that, or let's say 60 people, just so you feel better about it, do you think that mean of 60 people ended up up here in this very rare part of the distribution? Or do you think that mean of 60 people was very here, here in this very rare part of this distribution? Unlikely, if I've gathered a mean of 60 people, that mean probably came from the very middle of the distribution where most everybody else is. 
So statisticians are moving under the assumption that when we've calculated a mean from a sample, that that sample is representing where the mean of that overall distribution is. Remember, the mean is the mean is the mean. However, I would like you to recognize that if I calculated a mean of 60 people, there is a chance it came from down here or up here or anywhere in between. Now, it's most likely that it came from the middle, but there is still a chance it came from anywhere else in this distribution. And that is what's lending to some of our type 2 error. So let's talk about what we see here visually. I wanted you to see this type 1 error peeking through so that we could talk about it. This line here represents where anything after this score would be considered um, rejecting the null, right? So this is what, if we were doing a z-test, this would be um, 1.96. Any z-score above 1.96, we would have rejected the null. And so you can see what chunk of this distribution we have, what probability of scores we have that would be in the rejection region. Now I'm talking about the blue distribution because you can see what proportion of the yellow distribution would be in the rejection region. That would be two and a half percent. But of the blue distribution, do you see how this is dictated by um, where this blue distribution is and where we set the, the line? The line is set from the yellow distribution, but that then it tells us how likely we are to find a score that's in the rejection region. Now let's look at everything to the left of this line. This is the likelihood that even though there clearly is a difference between the blue distribution and the yellow distribution, this area here represents um, the part of the distribution that will be in the fail to reject region. So for example, if I take vitamin dam consumers and I find their mean to be right here, let's say if it was a z-score, it would be 1.6. If it's 1.6, it would be in the fail to reject region. But do you see how that would be wrong? Clearly this blue distribution is different from this yellow distribution. But just because we randomly sampled and we ended up with a mean down here, we made a mistake and concluded that vitamin DAM did not make you smarter because it didn't cross this magic line. This line is defining whether it's in the rejection region or not. So this area here is the type two error. So it's kind of this greenish portion plus this little blue. So it's everything to the left of this line. So let's go ahead and shade that in. So it's everything to the left of this line. And I'm gonna make this <laughs> purple. This blue distribution is our alternative hypothesis. Part of this blue distribution falls in the fail to reject region. That was defined by this line 1.96. So the portion of this blue distribution that falls in the fail to reject region is our type two error. So these are our two types of errors. Notice that the type one error required that we didn't even have a blue distribution. This didn't exist. The type one error is saying in reality, there's no difference between damn consumer, vitamin damn consumers and non-damn consumers. And so that means that the yellow distribution is all that exists, and then the red zone would be our type 1 error. The type 2 error assumes that the blue distribution does exist. And if it does exist, what's the likelihood that I fail to find it? So what I want to point out is that the type 1 error and the type 2 error are all dependent on what reality is but we don't know what reality is. None of us get to speak to God and find out what the truth really is. We only have the probabilities of likelihoods for finding these things. So we don't know for sure whether we've made a type one error or a type two error. All we can do is reduce the likelihood of making a type one error and a type two error. But the type two error requires that we've concluded there's no difference between groups when in fact there really is. And the type one error requires that we concluded there is a difference between groups when in fact there really isn't. So we're gonna stop here for a minute and then we're gonna talk about how you can reduce your type one and type two error in another video.